With today's social media, everybody puts images all over the place. Well, that's a great thing because it's a good opportunity for people to be able to take and see our work. Well, what I want to do here is when we put images out on Facebook, put them out on our blogs, when we're posting things for Twitter and, and everything out there, we want to make sure that any time that we have images that are out there, that we're actually watermarking our images and actually making sure that we include copyright information. Well, what I've done is I've created a Photoshop document here. If you look at this document, you can see I've got a band going through here. I actually want to create a brush out of this to apply to our our images. You can see it's actually faded. You can see the transparency. The checkerboard here indicates a transparency uh, in the background. And you can see I just made a selection here, filled it with black, and reduced the opacity. Well, I've got our text here, but I want to add some copyright information. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select my text tool. Just select the letter T. That selects my text tool. And I'm going to click on that existing text layer that I've got. Well, I'm just going to push my space bar and I'm going to move my cursor over this other side. I want to add the copyright information. Well, to add a copyright symbol, there's a couple different ways that we can do it. If you're on a Mac, I'm going to hold down my Option key and press the G key. And you can see now that it gives me a copyright symbol. That's the Option then the G key. On a PC, I'm going to hold my Alt key down, and then I'm going to type in 0169. That's Alt 0169. But what's important is that you have to type the 160169 on your 10 keypad. You can't type it across the top of your keyboard, but it needs to be on your uh, 10 keypad and that'll give you your copyright symbol. Well, we're going to go ahead. I'm going to type in a date in here copyright 2010 Go up to my little X here or my check mark and I'm going to commit the layer so you can see now I've got ronnichols.com and copyright 2010. Well, we're going to go ahead. I'm going to save this file. So I'm going to go file save And we'll go ahead and close this file So we're going to go file close I now have my images for Facebook open in Photoshop. Actually, I've got about three different images open right now. And I've already sized the images to about 500 pixels for the longest dimension because that's really all we need for Facebook. Those are very small images that are going out there. But again, I don't want people taking the images or uh, not only my clients, but also other photographers who may be a little unscrupulous and actually take and grab those images and use them on their own site. So I want to be sure that we're actually going to go ahead and we're going to protect them. Well, one of the ways we can do that is to be apply the watermark. So you saw how we created the art to be able to create a brush. Well, we're going to go to our Studio Retouching Palette, and on our Studio Retouching Palette, we've got an Add Logo section, and we've got an Add Logo to 8x10. Well, this image has to be cropped to an 8x10 format, so we can go ahead and click on this, but I'm going to hold my Shift key when I click on this Add Logo on 8x10 on here. And what that does is that's going to open up a dialog for me to be able to go out and I'm going to go find a file. And what I'm going to do is find the Photoshop file, that Facebook logo file that we just created there. I'm going to go ahead and click Open. And what it's going to do for me is actually build a brush. Well, if you look here, it built a very, very small brush. But it's just like any other brush, so I can actually increase the size of that brush. In this case, you can see how I can make it go larger or smaller. I'm using the bracket keys. Well, I want to actually put my watermark on there in white. So what I'm going to do is if go over to my palette over here. And if I actually hit my X key, that flips my foreground and background colors. So you can see how I've got a uh, white uh, selected as my foreground color. Now I have my brush. What I want to do is I want to change the opacity of my brush to 50% so I can hit the just tap the 5 key. Notice my opacity up here at the top now is now 50% and I'm ready to go. My logo covers all the way across here. I can decide wherever I want it to appear on the image. I can just go ahead and tap on it and it shows my logo there. I don't really care for it. It's a little hard to see in some of that area there. So I'm just do a command Z and I can actually take and I can move it around a little bit if I want to get this RN in a little bit darker area. We can go in and do that. There, now you can see how we've actually applied that watermark. If I want to increase that opacity, I can go ahead and I can type in 100 to get back to 100% on my opacity. And we could go in here and I can click that. And you can see how the watermark becomes more obvious. Well, because I've got more images open, I can actually very quickly go ahead and uh, apply it to these other images. I'm going to hold my Command key click on this add logo to 8x10 and what it does is it actually applies the 
logo layer for me. It's added an additional layer for me. It gives me guidelines on there. And now I'm ready to go start applying the logo. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to bring this one up here. And let's adjust the size of the brush to get it the way we want it. We can go in here. This one I'm going to just do it at the 50% so it's a little bit lighter on the image. We go ahead and click it and there's our logo there. I want to go to my next image. All that we're going to do is go out here and find our other image, our last image that we've got here. Bring that image up to full screen. Go ahead and tap it and we've applied our watermark. Well now I have the three images that are open. They all have layers on them but I quickly want to be able to save them. So all I have to do is hold a command shift. Go ahead and once again double click on the same logo key and it's going to tell me that I'm going to overwrite my files. Yes, because I've already created a set of small files. You want to be sure you don't overwrite your original files. And now it's just dropping them right back into my folder where we're ready to go ahead and upload the images to Facebook. Thanks for taking the opportunity to listen today. And just want to show you another way to be able to use the Ronicle Studio Retouching Palette for those everyday tasks that we do over and over again in the studio. We make everything easy for you at ronnichols.com.